A very good morning here from the airport of Montreal. My name is Robin and I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this new video of mine. I'm here in Montreal to fly with Porter on their Bombardier Dash 8 Q400. So far, I have flown with uh, WestJet Q400s, Air Canada's Q400s, and now today we're trying out the Porter Q400. Let's see which one is the best. We're flying to Newark, but first we're making a stop in Toronto. Not at Pearson, but we're making a stop at Toronto City Airport. That's uh, Billy Bishop Airport. That's really cool. So let's go uh, to security. I have already checked in and it was pretty funny because once she saw my password, the, the check-in lady here started talking Dutch to me, which incidentally is my native language. So, so far we're off for a good start. Let's go to, to security, then on to Toronto, then on to uh, Newark. So please, come with me. Porter are a Toronto-based airline that I've wanted to fly ever since I moved to Canada. The airline, however, only operate regional flights in Eastern Canada with Toronto Billy Bishop Airport as their headquarters. So when I found myself in Montreal, after the inaugural Airbus A220 flight with Air Canada, I saw this as an excellent opportunity to try out Porter. It's really worth to go to Montreal Airport a little early as there's lots to do here, especially when it comes to dining. And frankly, the way these places are designed makes you forget you're even at an airport. Of course, an airport wouldn't be complete if it wouldn't be selling souvenirs with the city name and local sports teams. Honest question though, do people actually find these neck pillows comfortable? Let me know in the comments down below what you think. All in all, I really like this part of the airport. It's bright and it doesn't have an airport feel at all. All the duty free shops though are behind these newly placed turnstiles and only accessible for passengers traveling internationally. Well, that's the terminal here in Montreal. The aircraft is here and it looks like we're dodging a bullet here because both WestJet and Air Canada have canceled all their flights to Toronto Billy Bishop Airport. But so far, Porter seems to fly. There's a winter storm, like a snowstorm uh, coming to Toronto with freezing rain, so it is probably going to be a bumpy ride, but it seems like we are actually going to Toronto, so let's go to the gate right now. Porter have a very simple fleet. They operate 29 aircraft in total, and they're all the Havilland Canada Dash 8 Q400 aircraft. The Dash 8 we're flying on today was delivered to Porter in September of 2009, and on the date of flying, it was just over 10 years old. Porter allowed two pieces of carry-on luggage, one personal and a small carry-on suitcase. However, if you have booked a basic economy ticket, you're only allowed a personal item. Surprisingly, without delay, we left Montreal for Toronto. As with many large airports, they're not actually located in the city they're named after, 
and Toronto Pearson Airport is no exception. Billy Bishop Airport, on the other hand, is located right in the heart of downtown Toronto, but only turboprop aircraft are allowed to land here, like the Dash 8 Q400 aircraft Porter Flywith. The Porter Q400 has a total of 74 seats in an all economy configuration, equal to Air Canada on their Q400 and four less than WestJet. They have a whole row of extra seats. Toronto City Airport, Billy Bishop Airport here on Toronto Island and I'm actually surprised that with the weather conditions we made it some very brave pilots. Um, it was a quite a bumpy ride getting into Toronto uh, and there was lots of snow on the runway you might have seen on the landing footage. My connecting flight to Newark has been delayed by an hour and 15 minutes um, and they say that it might actually get worse here with the snowstorm so I really hope that um, uh, that I can actually get to New York. At least it gives us some time here to uh, check out the lounge here, the uh, terminal at Billy Bishop Airport. So let's go explore here. Toronto City Airport has only one terminal for all departures. In 2017 and 2018, 2.8 million people traveled through this tiny airport that is primarily used by Air Canada and Porter. The modern terminal has ample seating and several shops, food places, and even a duty-free shop for the international travelers. The airport used to give out free drinks like coffee and soft drinks and snacks like almonds, but has eliminated this in late 2018. Our second flight was the only left on the board and had a reported delay of over an hour. And with the increasing amounts of snow still falling in Toronto, I wasn't sure whether we were even going to make it out of Toronto today. But for a small airport like this one, there's really great seating and facilities around. I really like Toronto City Airport. I'm glad that I finally get to fly through here. Finally, just over an hour later, boarding was announced and we were able to leave Toronto. But not before a quick layer of the icing fluid. After takeoff, I'll show you more of what it's like to fly with Porter on their Q400.
Although Porter have a single class configuration, there are different classifications of seats. We're seated in a classic seat, and seat selection here costed $27 per leg, so $54 in total. Then there's a section called Premium. There's nothing premium about these seats, they're just closer to the exit, so you can disembark quicker. And lastly, Porter have Premium Plus seats that have extra legroom. The seats are identical to the ones Air Canada have on their Q400 I flew on in last week's video, with a large adjustable tray table. Down in the seat pocket, you'll find the safety card for this aircraft, Porter's in-flight magazine, Reporter, and an air sickness bag. And on legroom, Porter is the clear winner of the three airlines we're comparing today. Of course, all seats come with an air vent and personal reading light. Porter also hand out free snacks and drinks during the flight, and this includes free alcoholic beverages. And they're not small cans either. Again, Porter wins this round. Porter's in-flight magazine is the only available in-flight entertainment, but it's quite a good read, and it even has some games too. The lavatories on this Q400 are as cramped as all the others. That's the nature of this plane. Unlike the Air Canada Dash 8 from last week, at least this one does have a sink. Although this one was out of order. For my final two cents on this flight, stick around until after landing. Well, we actually made it to Newark. I'm so surprised with this snowstorm that we actually got here. And uh, for a while, I was so afraid that the flights would be canceled because both Air Canada and WestJet have canceled all their flights to Toronto and Toronto City Airport, but Porter didn't. They're like, nope, <laughs> we're getting these guys out of there. And with a little delay, eventually we did get to Newark. I'm really happy with the experience that I had, both with the airport of Toronto, Billy Bishop, but also with Porter. And with Porter, the experience up until the airport wasn't amazing, and that's mostly because they charge such humongous fees on seat selection. $27 per leg, and that's way too expensive just to be able to sit either aisle or window. They do select a seat for you, and if you want to have it changed, they'll, they'll charge you for it, and eventually, the aircraft wasn't even full. I counted on the last leg to Newark, only 15 people on board. So I got free seat selection. I was able to sit wherever I wanted. So I didn't have to pay for it. Another thing they charge a lot for is changing your uh, ticket. I had to pay an extra $100 to change a ticket just to a different day, uh, which is fairly expensive as well. But in return, you get outstanding service. The check-in process was very smooth. The lady talked to me in Dutch, 
my native language, which is very interesting. And then on the plane, you get all the drinks that you want, including alcoholic, you get snacks. So you pay a premium, but you get a premium in return. And most importantly, you get to your destination. I'm really happy with the experience. And I guess, yes, it was worth it. I would love to fly Porter again. That's it for me today. I'm going to New York to my friends. And I want to, uh, uh, want to ask you, I want to thank you for watching this new video. If you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, please subscribe to the channel. See you next week.